for more on this, I'm joined now by Robert Riggs, geopolitical risk consultant focused on the Middle East. It's good to have you, sir. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much. So it's great to be on. Yeah. So obviously, this is a very developing story. We know Iran has been uh, wanting revenge ever since that airstrike on April 1st. But what do you think? Is this now the start of that much wider conflict we've all been kind of watching for? I think that Iran does not want it to be the start of the wider conflict. But the fact that they've been willing to take the risk of launching these drones and, and evidently missiles as well from their own territory, despite the threats from the Israeli foreign minister earlier this week and also Biden warning them not to do so, you know, this could, you know, this could trigger a, a heavy retaliation from the Israeli Air Force into Iranian territory itself, which would be the first time that that's happened since the Islamic Republic has appeared 45 years ago. And if that happens, then, you know, all bets are off. It could very easily spiral. And I think that now the kind of the onus is going to be on Israel as to whether or not they uh, determine that they want to take on a wider war with Iran, which is a, you know, a very large country with, you know, a pretty significant military capabilities. Absolutely. But we do know that Israel has the backing of the United States. So, you know, we've got some live shots right now of Tel Aviv uh, as, you know, Israel awaits those airstrikes, which should be coming in the next few hours. At this point, how do you think the IDF and Israel as a whole, the government is really preparing for this? Well, I think that they have they have Israel has its own sets of drones um, and, a, and a lot of other radar and, and um, military capability that far is far superior to Iran. So, you know, there is the different the main difference between Israel and Iran is that Iran doesn't really have an air force. And that's why these uh, attack drones are going to take several hours to get to Israel. It's kind of like an attack in slow motion, whereas, you know, in the case of Israel, um, you know, they also have um, allies in the region besides just the United States. I mean, Jordan, it, they have to go over Jordanian airspace, and the Jordanian government has said they would try to shoot them down, uh, as unpopular as that might be with their own people. But nevertheless, that may happen. There's the UAE is an ally of Israel now, Bahrain, and those are also places where the U.S. has significant military basing, and Saudi Arabia, although it's not an ally of Israel officially. But, you know, that so... There's a there's a good chance that Israel will be able to stop many of these drones, but if they uh, if they sent a hundred like the IDF's reporting now and missiles, and they're coming from multiple locations, even in from some of their paramilitary allies in Lebanon, you know, or maybe even the Houthis, um, you know, I don't think that Israel will be able to catch them all. Um, maybe I'll be wrong, uh, hopefully, but. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's it's possible they won't. I guess I'm a little confused, too. I mean, you say you don't think Iran um, really wants a wider conflict. But, you know, what message does that really send if you're sending drones and airstrikes toward Israel? We know the track record Israel has in the U.S. in terms of retaliation as well. So what's the thought process here? And obviously you don't know either. But what do you think the thought process is with Iran doing this if they don't want a much wider conflict? I think that what happened is that, uh, in, in summary, Israel and Iran have been fighting a shadow war in Syria for since 2011, where Iran had moved a lot of its military assets into Syria to support Assad in his fight against the rebels. And Israel has been bombing those assets in Syria as a third zone of conflict, but it hasn't been on people's radar. And now Israel took the step of killing a high-ranking general of Iran in Syria. And so it placed Iran in a position where if they don't respond, then they look weak and they're already facing significant domestic dissent internally from people from the Woman Life Freedom Movement and their economy is in shambles. And so they were stuck in a between a rock and a hard place. If they don't respond, then it would allow Israel to attack even more. But if they do respond, it could trigger a overwhelming response from Israel and the United States. You know, and so they were that's why they they decided to take this risk, I think, with the hope that it wouldn't lead to that massive retaliation on the part of Israel and the United States, which could 
trigger the collapse of the regime there and, and more instability in the Middle East. Got it. OK, just before I let you go, we know that there are reports, at least, that U.S. President Joe Biden uh, is going to be speaking soon. But we also know he's going into meetings this afternoon with national security officials and cabinet members. How do you think those talks are going to go? What do you think is going to be happening with the United States this afternoon? I think that Biden is really has been jumping through every possible hoop and trying every way he could and communicating in back channels to Iran through Oman, through, you know, the UAE, through uh, Qatar, through others to try to not have a war in the Middle East during an election year. But at the same time, Biden has a long track record of very, very strong and he said it himself, ironclad support for Israel. So if Israel decides that they need to defend themselves by attacking Iran directly, and that begins a war, the U.S. will back Israel, and there will be a wider war in the Middle East that involves the United States, whether Biden likes it or not. And so I think now they're just looking at all possible contingencies and fingers crossed, hoping that there won't be, you know, another war in the Middle East. But I would say that at this point, there's a, a significant likelihood that there will be. OK, we will be tracking that then. Robert Riggs, geopolitical risk consultant focused on the Middle East. Really great to have you on. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It was, it was a pleasure to speak with you.